He'll throw out the challenge to faint. But here comes the back markers. And look at Moses Kasif. He's about to challenge the front marker. They hit it almost together. And I think you'll find perhaps Kasif has just got there from uh, the green there of Ava Fain and a good run also from the blue there of Keon Pavlidis. Uh, first time we've seen him running after uh, entering many races. I believe a bit of illness struck him over the Christmas uh, period and uh, great to see that um, he was close there as well. But I think you'll find he might just miss out. Yeah, looking down the track, it's looking like the red, yes, the hand up there is perhaps a scratching. Yep, so no red in uh, heat number two. That's left us with four athletes with only two spots available for the final. So Logan James uh, will run, uh, be our back marker. He'll run in the white from 5.75. Then we go out to Talia Bordington, the blue from 12. Then it, damn it, we'll run in the yellow from 14.5. In the green will be Jessica Linden, and she'll run from the mark of 15. So there's your four athletes in heat number two with only two spots available in the final. Yeah, great start from the back marker there, Logan James, as he'll try to get up onto them quickly. Boy, um, probably Linden still leading the... Coming through now is the blue of Boardington, but geez, look at James. He looks impressive and wins the second heat quite comfortably. Oh, geez, unfortunately, there looks like Ebony Sammet's going to require some first aid as he looks to have pulled up there with the uh, hamstring or something. So if we could get some ice to her pretty quickly, that would be great. And uh, great to see the fellow competitors getting around her there as she had some trouble down the track there. So never a great thing to see an injury, but um, a good run there, Logan James in the white. He's uh, been running for a couple of seasons now and he's looking pretty strong chance for the final. He'll be in there, no doubt about that. The official placings will come very shortly. Looking down the track, looks like just the one scratching from the third and final heat. And uh, Emily Canham, the green, is out. Emily Canham, the green, leaves us with a field of four. The yellow of Olivia Reed from 13. The blue of Cameron Mann from 8.75. Then it's Adam French, the white, 5.75. And the man with the toughest job ahead of him, it's Mitchell Branch, the red. He'll run from just quarter of a metre in the red. Yeah, good start from all the field. The yellow of Reed leads them out. Coming into it now is the blue of Cameron Man. The white moving through them nicely, Adam French. And here comes that fast back marker in Branch. They go to the line, the white takes it. Great run from Branch in the white. And I tell you what, I think Mitchell Branch, the back marker, from just a quarter of a metre, may have qualified for the final. So a nice run there from Adam French, the white. Used his handicap of 5.75. And I think you'll find the red closed up in the final stages to get over the other two front markers. Official results shortly. Yeah, so the flags are going up and no surprise that the, uh, the white of Adam French was the winner from 5.75. Good run from the back marker, the red Mitchell Branch. He was second from a quarter of a metre. And the yellow Olivia Reed just misses out on the final. In third place from 13 metres, the yellow. The winning time, the quickest one of the day, 11.44. 11.44 for Adam French in heat number three. It looks to be four of them, so we may have another scratching here. So the green of Ben Neal is there. He's off 16. The, uh, I can't see the yellow, so I'm pretty certain Brendan Cook may be out. So put a line through Brendan Cook, the uh, yellow. And also there is Yana Allen. She'll run from 12. In the white will be Cameron Mann. His mark is five. And we've got a man off scratch. He's uh, backing up after the heats. It's uh, Keon Pavlidis running in the new gen. Uh, in the red and he'll run from the mark of scratch. So right at the back of the field is Pavlidis looking up and seeing them all ahead of him. Yeah, Young nearly gets away okay there in the green as he leads them all away. Coming through now is Yana Allen, the blue. She's trying to get up to Neely, who's still just in front. But look at the runner in the white there, Cameron Mann, and also Pavlidis. They closed up on them in the final stages. And Cameron Mann there from the mark of five. I reckon he's saluted in heat number one. With Pavlidis uh, going with him most of the way, but couldn't quite get over the top of him. Now three will go through to the final. So those two, the red and the white, will definitely go through. The third was close. So we'll check on that one with the officials.
And we've got a nice field here again. We've got Tyson Hardhill. He'll run from the mark of one. He's our back marker. Then we go out to the wide of Rillam Kershaw. He'll run from five metres. Isaac Dixon, the youngster in the blue there, will run from 12. In addition to the field will be the yellow. So he'll be behind Dixon. Normally it's the case yellow in front of blue, but he is an addition to the field. That's Will French. And he'll run from the mark of five. So he'll be off the same mark as uh, Kershaw or the white. So Will French, the yellow, off five metres. And the front marker, the one that they've all got to catch, will be young Lucy Oliver. And she'll wear the green. And she's been given the handicap of 24 metres. So she'll be hard to catch, will be Oliver. As she's waiting there on the 24 metre mark and uh, looking back and saying, boys, catch me if you can. Yeah, she's gonna be hard to catch is Lucy Oliver from 24 as she leads them out. The little fella in Isaac Dixon's trying to make up some ground, but geez, look at the boys behind him start to rip their way through the field. And the yellow there of Will French takes them. So going through with him also will be Kershaw. And I tell you what, Isaac Dixon may have qualified as well. So it'll be the yellow, the white and the blue to go through to the final. The other twos just couldn't quite uh, either hold them off or get up to them, uh, considering with the handicaps that were uh, given to them there, Hardy off the mark of one, and uh, unfortunately young Lucy Oliver couldn't hold them out there from the mark of 24. Rebel Bell Chambers is ready to address the field here. Jacob Pipe is, of course, our state 100 metre champion. He's uh, having a run here in the Hobart gift of 3.5. Then the New South Welshman, Kenneth Wong, who really impressed us at Burnie, uh, finishing a very close second in the 70 from five metres. Luke Whitney here off six metres, of course, the Burnie gift winner of times gone by in the yellow. Adam French, the green's been impressive so far today from 7.25. I won't remind him, but in 1993, this man in the pink, Tim Potter, won this race from 10.5 metres. Yeah, good start from Potter as he leads the field out. French will try to get up to him quickly. Coming through the field nicely, there is the yellow of Whitney. So Potter's still in front. He'll be hard to run down. Kenneth Wong and Piper throw at him in the last couple of metres, and I think they've got there. So a nice run from the current state champion in Jagger Pibus and also Kenneth Wong who's been in some great shape over the Christmas carnivals period yeah, yeah, yeah. and that was a close one there in heat number one. I know I think you'll find the back markers though were managed to close them down from the front there and uh, we're going to see two pretty exciting runners in both Pibus and Kenneth Wong uh, in the semi-finals later on today. Yes, the back marker of Pibus got there so Jagger Pibus was the winner from 3.5 metres then it was the white of Kenneth Wong from five metres, and Luke Whitney, the yellow, was third from six metres. The winning time, 11.4, 11.04 for Pivas in heat number one. A lot better on the third time as David McRae to lead them out. Logan James quickly up to him along with Walker and the Blue starting to come through them. Look at Andrew Robinson, the stall gift winner, come through them and pulls up nicely there to win heat number two from Gilroy who, uh, despite that penalty there, still managed to get himself through and I think you'll find that the yellow there of Logan James is close up there in third. So, took a while to get it going. The uh, third heat, the second heat, sorry, in fact, but eventually... Yeah, so the red, Andrew Robinson was first from the mark of 4.25. Jared Gilroy also from that mark of 4.25, the white second. And the yellow there of Logan James, 6.75 metres, was third. And the time there is 11.32. 11.32 for Andrew Robinson in winning heat number two. The sign right, Hobart gift of 2019. A good start from Nichols as he leads them out and starts to pop up now and gets into his running. Coming through him now is Mitchell Branch. He's a good little runner this one and to also Cooper. Nichols trying to hang in there. Nichols will just take it, I think, from the fast finishing back marker in Ryan Cooper. And not too far away there was the white and blue of Colgrave and also Mitchell Branch. Mark Nichols, I think he might have just used that handicap of 10.5 perfectly there as he takes out heat number three. 
Ryan Cooper, of course, in some good shape. Having won that 200 at Devonport, uh, may have just got himself up into a strong second. Third was pretty close. We'll get that result to you very quickly. A yeah, good start from James as he drives in the first 10, 15 metres. He leads them out. Here comes Huxtable in the blue. John Howe looking pretty strong as well from the back of the field. James and, and Howe looked impressive. Probably Howe just over James and Huxtable a couple of strides back there into third. So both these runners in some good form, of course, with Callum James winning that Rosebury gift. John Howe starting to run himself into some very good shape with some good times on the uh, track up there in Domain. A good performance at the Atlas meeting Friday night and he's backed it up with a good run here in the heats of the gift. Yes, yeah, Smart in the pink gets away nicely along with Brandon Clark and Kasif the white starts to come up to them. Still Smart leading. Geez, look at Jacob Despart rip through the field and he goes up and joins Smart as those two go through almost together. I tell you what, that was a nice run from 0.5 of a metre. Brendan Smart and Despart hit the line almost together in heat number five. And uh, great to see the stall gift winner coming here to these carnivals like Hobart. Could easily be heading back to Victoria, but he stayed on and run very nicely there in heat number five. Away cleanly and dear, all the six runners in heat number one. Casey leads them out. Coming up to it quickly there is the green of Charlesworth. Moving through the field now is the Victorian in the white. And here comes Gaffney from the back of the field. They hit the line. Probably the green just held on in Laura Charlesworth. From the white and the red in Gross and Gaffney, they hit the line almost together. But uh, Laura Charlesworth using the 6.5 metre handicap nicely there and taking out heat number one. Yeah, no doubt about our winner, the flag of green goes up and that's the runner of Laura Charlesworth from 6.5. She was your winner. Second was the white, Olivia Gross from the marker 5. And then Morgan Gaffney, the back marker from 1.25, the red was third. The winning time was a 12.38. 12.38 for Laura Charlesworth in heat number one. A good start from Penny as she drives away and gets out of, um, in front of Olivia Reid. So Penny's still leading. Now coming through now is the two back markers, Kovacic and Allen. They're throwing at Penny. She's just in front. Emma Penny takes it out. Kovacic gets up to second and Allen couldn't quite get to her. I think you'll find she's held on for third. At uh, the 2016 winner there, Emma Penny, used that mark of eight metres nicely and takes out heat number two. Yeah, so once again, the, uh, the flag of green gets pushed up into the sky. That's your winner, Emma Penny, from eight metres. Then it was the, uh, the white of Beck Kovacic, who held on for uh, second from 2.5, and the red of Kiani Allen was third. So the three runners there going through to the semi-finals. The winning time was 12.45. A yeah, good start from all the field there. James leads them out. Coming up to it quickly here is the yellow. You can see it coming through, and that's McShane. McShane takes the lead. Down he throws out the challenge, and Gross coming into it as well. Those three go through the line almost together. Probably Gross in the end may have just closed up on them. The Victorian there from the mark of one metre. And I tell you what, Laura McShane looked impressive, and so did Laura Downey. So that was a pretty close one there in heat number three of the Rob Valentine TAS Network sponsored Hobart gift of 2019. A good start as it's uh, um, faint to lead them out. Jook Jones will come up to them quickly along with Chambers there, the white. Chapman starting to work her way through the field and Abby Chapman, geez, she's in some good shape as she goes through nicely from Chambers and Jones as the three form runners qualify there. Ava Faint from the six metre mark held on nicely there for fourth. I think you'll find it's going to be Chapman, Chambers and Jones to go through from the final heat of the TAS Network sponsored. Hobart gift of 2019. Yeah, once again, the, uh, the flag of the red, Abby Chapman goes up as the winner, 2.75.
Then it's the white of Kiara Chambers. She was second from 3.5. And Brooke Jones, the blue, held on for third from the mark of 4.5. The winning time, 12.67. Yeah, good start, and Cole with the standing start there is up into his running nice and quickly. He's got a lead of a couple of metres. He's throwing, coming at him quickly there is Brooks and Whitney, and Whitney just shuts it down and takes it easily in the end. So Whitney, from the back mark of one, gets up from the blue there of Brooks, and uh, Williams and Cole not far away there in third and fourth. But gee, Luke Whitney uh, is very, very competitive in the open ranks and uh, showing the uh, other Masters competitors. He's probably the youngest of the Masters in that field, but... Certainly showing them that uh, they're going to need a bit bigger of a handicap than that to uh, be able to stop the, uh, the man from the, in red from one metre. Luke Whitney, he's your winner. Oh, yeah, Bakes is out nicely. A little bit of a stumble, but he's up into his running. Man coming through there with those big, powerful strides with Coleman as well. Look at Brendan Smart fly down the track. Bakes just in front. Smart gets to him, though. Just gets there from Bakes through the line. Jeez, it was close for third and fourth. But the uh, back marker there, Brendan Smart... Uh, in some really good shape in the open season or open running. He's already won himself four or five races uh, this season and uh, showing that form there in heat number two. Yeah, another great heat there of the uh, Masters. The back marker, the white, Brendan Smart got up, so he was first. Yeah, there she is. It's uh, Lynn Andrews to lead them out as she's into a running nice and uh, quickly here. She's got the lead. The blue's flying here in Jacqueline Lifton. Lifton it is. It goes past Andrews and Lifton it is will go through. I'll tell you what, the white flew home there, Gail Fisher. Uh, she'll probably get up for second. And uh, Kimberly Gillen just couldn't get to them. The handicap of seven was just a bit too difficult. And uh, I think she might be the unlucky one to miss out out of the four ladies there in heat number one. Yeah, the uh, results were pretty convincing there. The, uh, the runner in the blue. The blue of Jacqueline Lifton from the mark of 14 was first. Second was the yellow, Lynn Andrews from 31 metres. And then third, Gail Fisher, the white, from 8.5 metres was uh, third. 13.15. 13.15 was the time recorded by Lifton. Oh, geez, I tell you what, a good start from uh, Marksmovich in the white there as uh, she'll chase after Haynes, who's our leader. Haynes is pushing hard here as she goes into the win. It's going to be Sally Haynes, though. I think she's too strong. Goes through the line to win from Marksmovich, and uh, then Lyndon just couldn't quite get to them from the 2.5 metres. So uh, Sally Haynes in the blue, used the 14 metres handicap very nicely there and takes out heat number two. Yeah, first was Sally Haynes from the, uh, the blue yeah, from 14 metres. Second was the white, Cherie Maximovich from 8 metres. And then it was the red, Jessica Linden, third from 2.5 metres. 13.04, so Haynes has put the fastest time up there from the two heats. Straight backwards now, you need to turn your books backwards to page number 21. And on page 21, we'll see a field for the Whitney family, new gen 800 metre handicap. That's it, the field have been set off by the gun and of course the uh, youngster there in uh, Lucy Oliver. She's in the grey here coming up with about 200 metres to run. Uh, she'll come up to get the call of one lap to go. So the bell will ring and indicate for Lucy Oliver fairly shortly that she's got a lap to go. Off to a quick race uh, tempo. She's going to come up this hill and find that the going's going to get a little bit tougher as she's up to a very quick start. We go back to the uh, yellow of Isaac Dixon. Behind him now, about four to five metres, is the youngster in Ben Neely in the green. Now, moving nicely, a very good stride there is uh, the runner in white. That's Brillum Kershaw. He's making up ground with every stride. And our back marker, Bryce Laws, has got a huge task ahead of him as uh, already Kershaw has put about 20 to 30 metres into him and he's out after the runners in front of him. So at the moment, it's still Lucy Oliver. She's uh, got a good little lead here, so she's going to use the uh, downhill, which she'll be experiencing very shortly and uh, hopefully going to show the uh, boys behind her a clean set of heels, which he's done from the start. Dixon uh, just taking order about where he is. He's second at the moment. 
Uh, he's got a fairly strong runner behind him now in uh, Brillum Kershaw, the white, who's uh, probably starting to find the going a little bit tougher after that good start that he produced in the first 200. So Lucy Oliver it is. She's had that really good handicap from the start and she's using it beautifully at the moment. So she moves down the back there. She's got about probably 150 metres to go. I tell you what, Isaac Dixon's going to have to get the... Uh, the arms pumping and the legs moving a bit quicker than he is because I tell you what, little Lucy Oliver's going to be hard to catch. Kershaw, who looked good in the early stages, is now starting to find the going really tough. So maybe it's Lucy Oliver. She uh, zipped away at the start. She's finding it pretty tough now. She's pushing up the hill. It's uh, Dixon, the only one, I think, really, that can get to it. Look at him go, young Dixon, now in the, in the yellow. Oliver... She's got to start to do something. She's still in front. Isaac Dixon, what a run from the uh, pretty tough mark. It's Oliver in front. Dixon throwing everything he can. Lucy Oliver, though, is going to use that front mark beautifully. And she wins from Isaac Dixon. A good run from Ben Neely. He looked a bit out of it there in the early stages. He comes through for third. Tell you what, Brillum Kershaw, I think, is just happy to beat someone home. He's a little bit tired in the early later stages there. And the back marker, Bryce Laws, he just couldn't get to them. It was uh, too big of a task from the scratch mark. But uh, great to see the uh, youngsters there in the Whitney family, new Gen 800, having a real go there around the two laps. Anyone from Pace Financial or D'Angelo's Restaurante, could you come to the middle of the arena? You're uh, going to be required very shortly as uh, we'll be handing out the... Uh, Various prizes. Here we are. Ramble Bell Chambers. And that's it. The gun sets this field of 11 runners away. And it's Nicole Perry who's going to be our early leader. And certainly one to catch at the front of the field as she settles into her pace nicely. Right behind her there is Emily McKinnis who's a little bit back. Now Emma St John is the runner in red and white. There's the three ladies in those uh, twin colours there leading the way. Aaron Humphrey is the next, uh, the first of the gentlemen in the race as he's leading up Ben McShane, the orange. Then we go back to the black of Gus Tomlinson Smith, who's leading a fairly big field of about four or five runners behind him. Jamie Lawrence there, the blue. The uh, yellow is a runner there of uh, Callum Stevens. Also in there is Anastasio, Angus Lonecki, the grey. Grant Page is just starting to make some contact with the runners off those middle to back marks. So one lap to go, and I tell you what, Nicole Perry's not going to be easy to catch. She goes uh, um, into the second lap, and she's got a nice little lead. Emerson John has pushed Emily McKinnis into third position as uh, she tracks out after Perry. Aaron Humphrey now starting to get uh, moving as he's uh, starting to leave uh, ben McShane a little bit behind him, the orange, and he sets out after Perry. Uh, behind them, probably the only real dangers are probably going to come from the black and also the, uh, the, the blue there, the blue of uh, Jamie Lawrence, of course, the black of Gus Tomlinson-Smith. They go down with about 150 metres to go. Nicole Perry punching hard here as she goes up the hill. Aaron Humphrey out after in the purple. So it's Perry in front. She's going up to the hill here. She's going to be hard to run down. Humphrey's throwing it down with everything he's got to try and get to her. Nicole Perry holding strong though. Nicole Perry I think is going to be with only about 30 metres to go. She's going to hang on and get another Hobart 800. So a fantastic great win from her. Aaron Humphrey did everything he could to get to her. Gets the second, Ben McShane. Then it's Anastasio and uh, yeah, Stevens in the yellow. They're all coming through thick and fast. Page passed a couple there as they all finish off in that Pace Financial Restaurant D'Angelo's 800 metres. A good win to Nicole Perry from the mark of 145 as she takes it out. And a good run from all of them there as they're getting around each other and congratulating each other on a pretty tough race, the 800 metres. Uh. I better thank my coach, Mike Dunson. Um, thanks also to the sponsors, um, Pace Financial and D'Angelo's, um, and everyone else who was in the race. Well done. Thanks, Aaron Humphrey. Uh, we trained together, so it was nice to get one up on him today. <laughs> thanks. Another uh, opportunity to see the 800 metre distance being tackled by our Masters athletes. Delicious. Didn't even know there was a business called that. Delicious Masters 800 metres. 
And that's it. They're away and running in the delicious Masters 800 metres. The uh, back marker there, of course, of Brooks gets the call of two laps to run, but very soon will be uh, greeted by the runner of Alan Carlton in the green and white who leads this field up. The yellow and white of Paul nearly uh, tracking onto him pretty quickly here as they're going to get the call of one lap to go and hear the sound of the bell. So it's still Carlton in front, then it's Neely. We go back to two that are pretty much running along together at the moment. It's Alan Bakes, the uh, blue and white, who's just been passed by Hanson, who started 10 metres behind him, but he's just got ahead of Bakes in the early stages. We go back a long, long way now to the grey, and that's Michael Driesen. Behind him there is the uh, orange of Phil Hinnant. Uh, Michelle Cockrell, the green, coming into it. I tell you what, Matthew Brooks is off to a quick beginning as he's gone past the other back markers and he's setting out after the leaders. The leaders at the moment still are the yellow and white there of Paul Neely who's put uh, Alan Carlton into second place. So, yeah, I tell you what, uh, Paul Neely's uh, absolutely making every post a winner at the moment. He's got a huge lead with about 200 metres to run. They're uh, throwing the challenge out to him, the uh, red and white of Shane Hansen and also Bakes there trying to push themselves up. I tell you what, these back markers have got a lot of work to do if they want to catch up to Paul Neely. So Neely it is who goes down the back straight here, getting plenty of encouragement from his uh, probably his training partners there, I would have thought. But uh, look, he's starting to run in out of petrol here at the front. Uh, the hill's coming up to him here. Will they get to him? Hanson, the red and white, throwing out the challenge. Helen Bates coming into it as well. It's uh, still the runner of Paul Neely. Oh, gee, I tell you what, he's running completely out of gas here. There's hardly any uh, distance to go. Neely's throwing everything he can at it, but there's nothing left, but he's going to get there, I reckon. Paul Neely pushing hard, and yes, Paul Neely's going to win. Well done. He pushed it hard from the start, and he's been rewarded. And I tell you what, uh, nice run there from Shane Hansen. Alan Bates is having a look. Can he hang on for third? Here comes the back marker, Brooks. And no, he'll get there, Batesy. Well done. And uh, Brooks gets up there to fourth. The others are coming through the line thick and fast. Well done to the Masters. Good running, guys. Great to see you out there having a real go at it as they all start to come through the line. So some good running there. Three 800-metre races uh, of a variety of ages. And, uh, of course, the new gens in the... Uh, the the youngsters, the open, and then of course our masters there, which was uh, three pretty exciting two lap races. <laughs> Semi final number one coming up in a couple of minutes time and that's the sign right Hobart gift of 2019. Five men down there at the start line for semi-final number one. Away, well in the second time of asking, it's James who leads them out. Coming up to him quickly will be Kenneth Wong and also Kasif in the white. Still James just in front, Wong throwing it in, Kasif probably just gets there. A good run from Moses Kasif the white. I tell you what, it was nothing between second, third and fourth. But I tell you what, Moses Kasif there from the mark of five. He had some very good runners closing in on him in the final stages, but I think you'll find... The uh, youngster from Hobart's got up there in semi-final number one. Yes, as my good man walks over to the flags, the first one he'll be holding up is the white of Moses Kasif from the mark of five metres. He's into the final. And a great run from Jacob Despard to get up for second, the red. And third, and just missing out, is Kenneth Wong, the blue, from the mark of five metres. At the time, they've uh, ramped things up a tad. It's 10.96. 10.96 for Moses Kasif. <laughs> Away and Brennan Smart leads them out. Huxtable then Gilroy the blue starting to come through the field now is Robinson and also John Howe from the back. They're coming towards the line. Smart still just in front. They throw at the line. Probably Robinson just over Howe for that second spot in the final. But no doubting Brendan Smart the green who... Uh, has been in fantastic shape this season with multiple victories already and showing that he's ready for another crack at it in the Hobart gift final as he takes out semi-final number two. Yeah, no doubt about our winner there in semi-final number two, Brendan Smart.
and the colour green gets held up into the sky and that was our winner. He ran from 10.25, Brendan Smart. A good start and Nichols leads them out. Behind him is James and coming through them now is Mitchell Branch and also Cooper and Pibus from the back of the field. Nichols still in front. Pibus throwing at him and Cooper. Pibus and Cooper go through from the back. A great runs from the two back markers. So Jagger Pibus, the fastest man in Tasmania on that uh, state title. He showed all that speed there as he ripped through them. And coming along for the ride also was Ryan Cooper there in the white. So... The two form runners are uh, through to the semi final and through to the final later on this afternoon. And always good to see the back markers challenging the front markers in these gift races. Final and a good win to the red. Jagger Pibus from 3.5. Then Ryan Cooper, 3.75 second. And the runner in green, Mark Nichols, was third from 10.5 metres. No, no, I. Uh, I and they're away and running. It's Penny to lead them out. Coming out of quickly will be Laura Downey, Brooke Jones, and also Abby Chapman starting to make her way through the field. And look at Gross from the back of the field. Mia Gross, the Victorian, gets there. What a run from the Victorian, from the mark of one. Uh, she saw them all ahead of her, but it didn't stop her as she ripped through the field there and took out semi-final number one. Second and third was close. I think Penny was right up there, the pink, and the others will uh, have to wait on the judges there. It was a close one in semi-final number one. Yeah, the results uh, just threw me a little bit. I thought the front was closer than she was, but it was the red, Mia Gross, who got up for the victory, no doubt about that. Abby Chapman, the blue, from 2.75 second, and the green, Laura Downey, got up for that third um, important spot in the final from 5.5. The winning time, 12.01, 12.01. <laughs> Charlesworth leads the map and McShane quickly up to her. Gross coming into it down the yellow and starting to rip through the field now as the back markers in Kovacic and Gaffney. They're coming all together here. Gaffney's the one from the back that's coming out of them. What a run from Morgan Gaffney to get up from the back mark of 1.25. Determination on her face as she went down the straight and she tracked the girls down with about five metres to run and takes it out in semi final number two. Morgan Gaffney, the state champion. Yeah, so semi-final number two, the winner was Morgan Gaffney. The goes up into the sky. That's the second time we've seen it from these semi-finals. Second was the yellow, Olivia Gross from five metres. And then it was the green, Laura McShane, who's into the final. The winning time, a little bit slower than semi-final number one, 12.36. A good start from all of them. Bates leads them out at the peak. It'll be hard to run down. Here comes Greg Mann in the green. Coming through them now is Paul Williams. Brooks is coming into it. Luke Whitney's flying home in the final stages. Whitney gets up from the back mark. And uh, from Smart there in the white, he's, uh, he used to have copped something on the elbow there, Whitney, as he went through the barriers. He's uh, grabbing at the uh, elbow there, but... I, I don't know if it's a serious one, it's just giving him a little bit of pain, but he's got up. So a great run from Luke Whitney. He's in a little bit of discomfort there. I know his coach Ray Quarrell will be concerned for his health. And uh, I reckon it was Brendan Smart who, who tried to run with Whitney when he got to him, but I reckon he's held on for second. And I tell you what, the others, they were really, really close as they hit the line for third. So red, there it is, Luke Whitney, the winner. One metre, the white, Brendan Smart second, 3.25. And Matthew Brooks, the blue, got up for third, 10.25. Andrew's away nicely, she leaves the field out. Coming up to it quickly, you'd think, will be Haynes, the white, and also Liverton. They're coming at it from everywhere. Haynes it is who probably takes the lead. Sally Haynes and Liverton go together. Haynes gets up from Liverton, the blue. And Maximich comes through from the back mark and Lynn Andrews just uh, couldn't quite hold them out there from the front mark, but well done to Sally Haynes. And I know her coach Joel Deegan will be very happy with that performance as she goes down and wins the Kathleen Quarrel 100 metres. A good performance from Sally Haynes. Yeah, the white flag goes up and that's Sally Haynes from 14, the winner. Then it was the blue, a great battle between them. Jackie Lifford and 14 metres. 
And then the back marker, Cherie Maximovich, got up for third from eight metres. And the uh, winning time there was 12.87. Um, 12.87 for Sally Haynes, your winner. We're about to go here in this Bennett's Petroleum Supplies Des McConnan hand, Memorial Handicap, the maiden. This should be a great final, this one. Yeah, Faint got off to a good start, the pink. Should be hard to run down. Here comes Linden in the green, started to come into it. Look at him rip through the field there in French. French it is, is going to be the big challenger along with Branch from the back, but French gets up. A great run in the blue from the youngster there, Adam French. A good run in the blue there from 5.75. Not far away there was the red of Mitchell Branch who came right into it in the latter stages. But well done to so Adam French there in the blue. A good run from him. He uh, certainly carried that form from the heats through to that final. Yeah, results of that uh, Des McConnor Memorial maiden handicap. The blue, Adam French was the winner from 5.75 metres. Then it was Logan James, the yellow, off the same mark of 5.75. And it was the pink of Ava Faint from 19.25 third. Over to Ray Quarrell for the presentations to your winner, Adam French. Well done, Adam, great run. I'd like to thank Bennis Petroleum. They've been with us the whole 38 years. I coached Troy as a young 15 year old to a few titles and things, so he's been a great supporter of the Bikes and Spikes, and well done, Adam, on the day. Uh, well done to all the other runners for a really good race. Um, thank you to Bennett's Petroleum Supplies for sponsoring this event. Um, thank you to Trent Nichols and Greg James for coaching me. Thanks to the rest of my training squad and thank you to my mum and dad for taking me to all carnivals and for supporting me. Cheers. blocks here in the new gen. A yeah, good start and nearly leaves them out. Isaac Dix in the green. Here comes through Will French in the blue and the back marker cameraman getting up to him. Also Pavlidis right there. The back markers are going to throw the line together. Oh, I think you'll find Cameron Mann. Cameron Mann's got the job done there in the white. Oh, great run there between the three of them. Pavlidis was right there. Uh, French was there in the early stages, the two at the front, they just couldn't hold them out. And a good run, he's a strong looking athlete there, is Cameron Mann. And a great victory to the youngster from Pontville from five metres, Cameron Mann. A yeah, great uh, battle that was between the three at the back. Cameron Mann, Keon Pavlidis, Will French. The no results of the new gem 100 first, it's the colour white that gets held up from five metres, Cameron Mann. Keon Pavlidis got up a second from one metre, and then it was Will French, the blue, from the marker five. The winning time, 12.30, 12.30. And Lucy Oliver, the grey, leads them out, and I tell you what, getting up to it quickly, looks to be the runner of the purple in Ben Neely. So nearly it is who closes up on her. Dixon coming into it now. The black as he's opening up. And the boys at the back are starting to really get into it now. Cripps in the pink. The uh, yellow of wheel French at the back has gone past a couple. So French looks to be the biggest danger as he closes up along with the pink of Heath Cripps. Oh, they're almost together here with about 50 metres to run. Isaac Dixon, the black, throwing out the challenge. So does Cripps in the pink. So Dixon probably going to take the lead now. And he's pushing hard up the win. And look at the green come right into it. Cameron Mann. But young Isaac Dixon's too strong. Great run from Dixon. The uh, green there of Cameron Mann flew home, but he couldn't get to the little fella in uh, Isaac Dixon. What a run. He's been rewarded for having about eight races today, so uh, got himself the victory.
And I said I saw him at the uh, All Schools Championships in October and I certainly liked the look of him there. And uh, that was a great run there in the new gen, 300 metres. So the next uh, event we're about to see, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you can see them here just past the finishing line. We have our six ladies in the Rob Valentine restaurant. Uh, let me just check the sponsor there. Rob Valentine, Taz Network sponsored women's gift of 2019. The six ladies are here. They've uh, been congratulated by, of course, Ray Quarrell, who's responsible for the organisation of this carnival, along with Steve Robinson, the Tasmanian Athletic League uh, handicapper for the sprint distances. So congratulations to the six ladies. The first lady to go down in the 2019 Hobart gift final. She'll run from 5.5, the Bernie 400 metre runner in 2018, Laura McShane, the pink. In the green, running from the mark of 5.5, trained by Andrew Robinson, 15 TAL victories to her name. In the green, Laura Downey. In the yellow, the Victorian, trained by Joe Gawley, a fantastic pole vaulter. She'll run from five metres, it's Olivia Gross. In the blue, she is the Devonport gift winner of 2018, a two-time Latrobe gift winner, trained by Trent Nichols from 2.75, Abby Chapman. In the white, running from the mark of 1.25, she's the current 100, 200 metre state champion of Tasmania, a three-time winner of the Bernie gift. In the white, Morgan Gaffney. And our back marker today, running from the mark of one. In 2016, she won the 200 metres at Stall. She's trained by Joe Gooley in Geelong, Victoria. It's Mia Gross, the red. So the six ladies in the 2018, 2019 Hobart gift. Are down there near the start. The next person they'll be hearing from is Grenville Bell Chambers, the Tasmanian Athletic League starter. Yes, I was going to say a fantastic start from McShane, but uh, a little bit too quickly, I would have thought. I uh, feel that the pink was the one that just went a little bit too early. And uh, as we've seen a few times today, in fact, the uh, athlete that breaks in a 100 metre distance is uh, penalised a three quarters of a metre. Good start from the field as Downey leads them out with Gross to her inside. Coming through the field nicely now is the back marker in Mia Gross. Mia Gross it is who charges to the front. Mia Gross goes past the sister and she wins easily. So it's Gross from Gross. So Mia Gross the red first, Olivia Gross the yellow second and the two sisters. Fantastic trip they've made from Victoria. They competed at the Atlas meeting on Friday night and they've carried that form beautifully through to today here at the Bikes and Spikes Carnival. A dominant performance from the back marker, Mia Gross. Big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Fantastic performance from Mia Gross and congratulations to Joe Gooley, her coach. And I know she'll be going back across Bass Strait with a very, very nice sash over her neck. And uh, we do invite uh, Mia to please come over to the presentation area where you'll be receiving that fantastic sash. So at the moment we can now uh, see both uh, Sandra Spears, our Tasmanian Athletic League president, and also Ray Quarrell, of course, responsible for this fantastic carnival every year. Uh, congratulating each of the six finalists as we speak, and very shortly we'll be uh, hearing all hearing all about them as they go down the track. Firstly, running in the pink in the Hobart Gift from 10.25. It's the John Maguire train, Brendan Smart. <laughs> Running in the fire in the rough five metres, in the green, trained by Scott Goldsmith, Moses Kasif. <laughs> Running in the yellow, self-trained, winner of the 2013 stall gift and everything there is to win in Tasmania, it's Andrew Robinson. <laughs> 
Running from 3.75, a former winner of the Richmond Gift, winner of the Devonport 200 metres. From 3.75, Scott Goldsmith trained, Ryan Cooper, the blue. Running from 3.5, he is the 100, 200 metre state champion of Tasmania. In the white, Jagger Pibus. Running in the red from the mark of 0.5 of a metre. He is the 2018 Stall Gift Champion, Jacob Despard. Hobart Gift 2019, the runners are about to walk up, go down on their marks for what should be a fantastic final. Mark the Pink leads them out from Kasif. The Green Robinson started to come in and went along with Cooper. She's Jack and Pibus is off to a lightning start. Pibus it is in the white who gets to the front and Pibus wins. Fantastic performance from the state champion from the mark of 3.5. She's Despard flew home late to possibly get up into the top three with Kasif right there also. Uh, what a final it was and the youngster from Hobart trained by Wayne Mason. He's got up and saluted in the Hobart gift. A big round of applause to Jagger Pibus, the winner of the sign right Hobart gift of 2019. And we welcome Jagger over to the presentation area for what was a fantastic final and a great victory. And uh, I've been waiting to mention this all day and I know he'll be super happy. He's uh, actually been back this year, sponsored by Mike Gunson who is my coach, I might add, and uh, he wants to uh, certainly make it known that he's backed uh, Jagger this year. The $200 of sponsorship from Mike Gunson, of course, the SCAT president, who's gotten behind Jagger Pibus this season, and why not? Because what a run in the Hobart gift. Sponsored by Signright, over to you, Ray Quarrell. Well done, Jagger. Great run. Uh, great field, too, and I'd like to thank everybody for the depth in the competition today. It's been terrific. Some of the best we've ever had. Congratulations to Wayne, coaching such a great talent like this. And our sponsor, Signright, unfortunately couldn't be here, but thanks very much for your support. Oh wow, so um, firstly, I'd like to thank my coach Wayne Mason for everything he's done for me over the past six years. Uh, also, just to my family, my dad who's in the crowd there, and all my friends and supporters and just everyone who turned out today made it a great event and also to the sponsors so you know thanks a lot for that yeah great performance from the youngster jagger pibus and what a future he has ahead of him the official result is we'll see the flags being put up to the air the white was the winner jagger pibus from 3.5 second was moses kasif from five meters the green and what a run from the back marker, the red, Jacob Despard from 0.5 of a metre. Now the winning time, a quick one too, 10.78. 10.78 for Jagger Pibus. So he performed when it counted the most in the final and put up the fastest time of the day. And there they are, the two winners. Keep that round of applause going, ladies and gentlemen. What a great sight to see these great junior athletes. Very young, both of them, taking out the very, very big races here, the Hobart Gift. A fantastic shot for uh, all involved and uh, we certainly will be watching them in the future.